This is Eldritch Buds, an actual play Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition podcast. What's up, Eldritch Buddies? What up? What up, Eldritch Buddies? Buddies. Sitting at the virtual table with me today is... Scott. Sneaky, stealthy, and a scion of revolution, Gabriel Voss. Wilkes. Lord Jimothy of Creekwater, as played by level 5 sorcerer Zed. Speedy. The level five fighter bard, dirty dog, Chode. And Josh. The Loxodon Druid, who has really bad beer breath. <laughs> and I'm yeah, DM Connor. Previously on Eldritch Buds, our heroes arrive at the beautiful city of Capilon and decide to split up in search for the chain and their lost supplies. Gabriel and Zed search the carts and inns while Jinxie and Cho check out the bars. After a tip from the waitress at the Dirty Dog, Cho and Jinxie head off to try the Arcane Guild to see if the chain has stopped there. Finding out that the guild is closed from a friendly old wizard named Tigmar, our heroes went back to the Dirty Dog to wait for the others. Meanwhile, Cambero and Zed head to the Stonehead Inn to search for the chain, only to find the dark underbelly of the Capilonian rich. Zed learns that the chain stole a card from a rich dwarf, and Cambrio starts up a revolution of the servants. Viva la revolution! What will our heroes do with this new information? Will they get their supplies back? Let's find out. So we're going to pick up from the Stonehead, where the two... Uh, party members who are disguising themselves as Lord Jimothy and his servant Tadpole. Uh, Cambrio as Tadpole has just sparked revolution in the basement, as Lord Jimothy has just emptied some of his uh, some of his golds to these lovely uh, Stonehead uh, patrons. What would you guys like to do? Uh, Zed, also known as Lord Jimothy is uh, happy with the intel he's gathered. Um, so he is going to start heading back towards the uh, exit. Um, gonna quickly click on the old mine link that uh, that Combrio had opened earlier and uh, just say, uh, hey, uh, I don't know how you've uh, been doing down there, but uh, I think I've been uh, pretty successful. I think I've sparked a lot of good conversation up here. So, um, if you want to, if you want to join me, I think it's about time we head out of here. Okay, um, Combrio as, as Tadpole is just sitting, uh, kind of kind of like conspiratorially standing with the other sort of now leading figures of this budding revolution. It's just our, it's just our own little Caesar's assassins group, um, and we're just kind of you know plotting and detailing how we're going to do it. There's a lot of cutlery involved, like a lot. Um, I, s I assume all these guys are here because their masters are upstairs? Yeah, more or less. That's the, like, yeah. Ed Zed just bought everyone a bunch of extra drinks. So if you said it's that much more, perfect. All right, uh, so we're just going to uh, hear the I hear the voice in my head, and I'm going to go, oh, well, boys, it's, it's time for us, time for me to take my leave, but... Tonight we do what we do. And I'm just going to back out while still maintaining eye contact with that first one I met. And I just kind of slowly back out of the room. And you can just hear them. They, they start kind of like pump, pumping their fists a little bit. And they're like, vive la revolution. Vive la revolution. There's like I start pumping my fists on the way out and like I'm mouthing the words. Okay, perfect. So yeah, it, there's like whispered chants of, of uh, revolution and victory being chanted in the servant quarters. So you climb the stairs, you both meet at the front, and uh, if you would like, you can try and find the rest of your party. Alright, so I'm gonna... Alright, now, where did we say we were gonna meet them? Um, to be honest, we didn't, but if I was to bet literally anything, I say we just start scouring the bars and we're probably gonna run into Chode. He was, he was gonna look through the bars to try and find something, and I'm guessing probably would have stayed somewhere for one or seven years. But there's so many bars. We need to devise some sort of way to look through them. Let's get into the mind of Chode. Where would Chode go? 
we need to find the rowdiest place. I mean, yeah, that... With Jinxie? I don't know if, it's, if he'd survive in one of those places, but I guess... Jinx I don't think Chode would care. Going wherever Chode's going. Alright. Um, <laughs> okay, so there's a, is there, are all the bars... I'm imagining, like, a entertainment district X street, where it's just, like, a big old street of bars. So can we just start milling about, seeing if there's any sort of commotion? Because Jinxie's massive. Chode's also massive. Yeah, sure. So the entrance that you guys... investigation or perception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to give you a little bit of info first. The Ooh. entrance that you went through is kind of where all the inns and bars were located. You could gather. Uh, there's a pretty high density of of them, so you know that to start, it would kind of be back in that area. So give me a yeah, give me an investigation roll. It's a common. 18. 18, perfect. Uh, so, yeah, you feel fairly certain that um, this one street in particular, as you're walking through it, like there's kind of a, a street fight outside of one bar that's kind of spilling into the, like, inn of, of the next door neighbor. And uh, you see the sign over top of it, the dirty dog. And it's just this, like, picture of this mutt, like, holding up a like a fighting Irish fist kind of to his, to his chin. And, uh, that's, that's, you get a good sense that if there's a rowdy place, this is, this is where you'd find it. Turn to Zed and kind of make the obvious gesture of like, like, huh? Yeah, that, here? Start uh, here? that definitely, uh, looks like the place. I would say that somewhere in the walk over, I would have, um, like found it like oh it doesn't look like anyone's really looking at us or there's not many people in this area and I would have changed back and said no longer mm, do okay, I look perfect. like so you no longer look like Lord Jimothy yeah I still look like Tadpole okay. <laughs> <laughs> perfect uh, so let's pick up from inside the dirty dog as the two of you enter into what is only described as chaos incarnate the uh, bar fight is raging. There's now one chandelier kind of swinging and another one that's uh, smashed on the ground. There are uh, kegs being overturned. There are shot glasses being thrown. There are people pouring hard liquor into uh, the fireplace at, at the back of the bar. It's kind of making things firework and spark into, into different colors and things. And at the bar, you see a large robot and a woolly mammoth that's our kind of under the shrapnel of the chandelier. Well, those uh, those look like our guys. Jinxie's just shaking. <laughs> like Trust a scared me, dog. We really have to get you fighting, on. I swear. I'm, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> it's a great start walking time over. Day. And, and it's kick, like a game. Kick my way through the crowd as well. Sure, can you both roll me dexterity saving throws on your way? Yeah. Honestly, though, it's 17. a good time down there, football. 10? Fun? Uh, yeah, so uh, as you're walking through uh, Cambrio, you're you're pretty deft in your feet, so you're kind of tiptoeing over broken glass and blood and teeth on the ground and stuff. Zed, you're not as lucky. Uh, you do step on some broken glass. Uh, you take one piercing damage from it. That's some weak-ass boots, eh? Yeah, well. Some sharp-ass glass. Yeah. Broken glass is like one of the sharpest objects known to man. Legit. Four dwarves. There's like 12 chandeliers on the ground. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you guys meet up. Ah, uh, it's you guys. Hello. I've been trying to mind link, but uh, what the hell happened? You just ignoring me? So the mind link turns back on and it goes, uh, Jared, it's me, Cambrio. Yes, I know, sir. What? Guys, how could you? Anyways, uh, we were different kinds of successful. Um, I did some stuff. Zed did some stuff. Zed, if you want to go ahead and fill him in on your thing, uh, my thing can wait. Uh, yeah, so, look, we weren't as successful as we hoped, but all I know is I found out that the chain stole his carriage from a guy at the Stonehead. Um, he borrowed it to go on some kind of retrieval mission and, and uh, was supposed to return it and never did. So, 
Uh, that's kind of all I got. Interesting. Hmm. We, we met an old dude. Yeah, we met this old guy. He seemed pretty cool. He's magic. Mr. Magic. Oh, did... He's got a magic shop. Did he know the chain? No, but he might be a ticket into something called the Arcane Guild, and maybe someone's there would know about Mr. Chain. Yeah, that's, uh... That's actually a pretty, pretty decent lead. Um, but we have to wait till tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're closed today. That's uh, why we came back here. Well... I don't know if this is a bad idea, but maybe we should just head down to the shipping yard and check out there. I mean, if we can't wait till tomorrow, we should probably attempt to make some kind of progress today. Sure. Okay, but one one question. Mr. Captain, what, what happened? You look so different. Uh, put up... Kind of turn around, do a little face shimmy. You hear just like creaking, popping, sinew moving, and like ligaments just stretching. Uh, and I'm just gonna come back, uh, just detadpoled as Combrio or Cambrio? <laughs> as Combrio. Chinksy's just gonna give you a good old like sniff up and down. Ooh, is my scent the same? Oh. I've never met someone with such a propensity for smells. Is, is Combrio the same smell as Cambrio? I'm asking you. Oh, well, I'd say yes. Interesting. Now I've, now I've got your scent locked. Okay. Ooh. DM, please note that. Yeah. Yeah, Jinx, you can see through the disguise. <laughs> Ooh. You can smell through the disguise. Yeah. So what's the plan, gents? Um, uh, Zed's going to turn to uh, walk towards the door as I think it's kind of seems like we're heading towards the shipping Careful. and then kind of, kind of day look back it? and realize oh yeah these guys are sitting in a chandelier um, do you guys do you guys need a hand <laughs> hmm? oh no we put this back on because I thought it was hilarious <laughs> it up and like, it's, it's like goof. our table yeah. I love a goof <laughs> yeah. when you threw that chandelier this guy's hit hip he's with it when you threw that chandelier, uh, did you hit someone? Not intentionally. I might have just thrown it at somebody. But yeah, you just hear "Ah, fuck!" But <laughs> sorry, yeah, the fork not sorry. Hand. It's okay. It's the tagline of the bar. You can't even throw a chandelier in here. It's so packed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see you later, Shelly. All right. Okay. Bye. Uh, yeah. This. This has been. This has been great. I'm just. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna try to just tiptoe my way back out, just to get outside and try to get some some air. Uh, perfect. Uh, Jinxie, a shot glass hits the back of your head. <laughs> oh fuck! Get me out of here. <laughs> Jinxie's don't, like just don't, like, don't, Jinxie, like, come on. Oh, oh. Solo mind shot, Jinxie. Come on. I hate this place. I, I know, man. The basement's okay. way better. We'll have a lot more fun down there. The basement, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jinxie's just holding on to Chode, like as he drags him out. Is are all of Jinxie's like hair standing up, like like yeah, it's like yeah, flight it's of like fright a, mode for him? <laughs> what's his what's his tail doing? Poofy. Oh, just like a stiff back <laughs> cat, spinning like a helicopter. Yeah, yeah. T- tail <laughs> is between his legs, but just like brrr, like shaking. So you're, you're a dog, a cat, and a woolly mammoth. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's a loxodon. It's, it's a combination of everything. Uh, okay, yeah, so you guys um, leave the dirty dog. Are you making your way to the transport? Where, where's the head? Yes. Where, where are you guys headed? Is it of time of day for the transport to be, like, open? Sorry, is it... It's about four or five um, okay. in the evening, so you don't know. We're about, <laughs> we're about to find out. Yeah, it's like it's a, the sun hasn't set yet, so it's still. Feels it's not like, like daytime. Eleven, so it's no, yeah, no, no, totally no, no, shot. no, no, yeah. no. Uh, yeah, okay. So you guys make it through town, and it's like I said, hustling and bustling. So there's lots of people as you're making your way uh, east towards the transport, and more and more, those of you with uh, high enough passive perceptions, but truthfully, it's hard to miss. You're getting a lot of buys. 
a lot of people are staring at you guys like, what the hell am I looking at? Just with the four of you kind of all walking together, you are a very uh, interesting group. And um, you pass a few interesting places on your way. Notably, uh, you pass through not necessarily the town square in the middle, but in between kind of the bars and the inns on the south southwest side of the city. As you're approaching the tradesport, between those two locations, there seems to be kind of like a, a bulletin board or an announcement board uh, that's kind of uh, posted on the stone structure. And it's for different announcements or different things for kind of the poorer section of the city. Uh, there are different announcements, like uh, uh, Molly's having uh, her annual her annual bake sale next Tuesday. Um, there are things like uh, help wanted, need my uh, my my soil retailed arthritis, too bad to deal with it. Like there's kind of just little messages here and there like that. But you do find three or four different different missing posters and uh they all seem to be have posted in the past 10 days to two weeks or so fairly recent um the only other thing of note is um you get these uh or you don't get them but you see a number of postings for different guilds different churches different uh, kind of activities around um, around Kaplan. Uh, the only one that you guys recognize is the one for the House of Anim. And you see kind of a silhouetted stone building with a tower at the top that says um, at the bottom, life provides. Visit the House of Anim. Uh, other than that, there's really not too much in terms of information. Is there anything... I'd like to, you wanted to poke around at the board. Roll an investigation on the missing posters. It's yeah, to see sure. if I recognize anyone. Okay. And I I uh, forgot to use it last episode, so can I just use it for this like potentially small thing, but my DM inspiration for advantage? I don't want to wait until it's like a significant thing because I feel like No, you're good. Alright, so that's gonna be an eleven. Or a 10. <laughs> An 11 or a 10. Uh, what I would say is it's not like any of these, uh, because that's hard, because we're talking about medieval fantasy towns. We're not talking about missing posters where there's a perfectly clear picture of a person. Yeah. These are the best guesses at what somebody looks like. It's, you know, um, different drawings and sketchings of, of a person. Uh, you don't recognize any names. However, you do notice that um, all of them are uh, lower born. So they are servants. They are uh, bastards. They are kind of street rat type of individuals. Like they're, yeah, that's what I would say about about the commonalities between the missing people. All right, any um, commonalities between like age or gender? No, or... no, no commonalities. Uh, uh, in terms of like, it's not all you know, young men or old okay. women. That's or basically like that. what I it's not all dwarves. Looking yeah, for no, trying it's... to see if there's connection between the uh, the people we ran into in the forest. That seems no, to be not, another some influence. Not particularly. Uh, what I will say is um, closer inspection of these missing posters. You will see that all of them disappeared at night um, as they were running errands uh, and doing things uh, out, out and about town. Cool, cool, cool. That is all I needed from that message okay. board. Uh, can I take a little peruse? I want to see if I recognize any of the names in particular, uh, like cross-referencing the name I heard last night when they were talking about the one who went missing the most recently. I just want to see oh, okay. if that name's up on there. Yeah, sure. Uh, you do... Jensen or something like that? Yeah, uh, so I will say that Jumper. this doesn't, this doesn't Jumper. really involve a role. Yeah. Uh, you do see that Jumper's name is on here. Okay. Any, like, physical description of him? Uh, yeah. He is a, uh, a boy. Uh, he's about a 14-year-old human, human male. Uh, black hair, uh, dark eyes, very skinny, kind of, uh, I don't know, run-of-the-mill, uh, no, 
no distinguishing features or anything like that, but you do recognize the name Jumper. Uh, the other thing that I would say is uh, there is also um, posters for, like, you can tell that lords or nobles have brought down nicer pieces of paper uh, that have kind of nicer trim and, like, colored ink and stuff saying, like, if you need a job, like, we're hiring because something's happening to our fucking servants, so if you... <laughs> Like, there's always jobs to be filled, so that's. that's, that's uh, I want to. I want to grab a couple, unless they have like little tabs or. Yeah, they don't have phone numbers or anything, but you can you can take one. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take two. Three from different people. Uh, sure. Yeah. Sick. I do. Okay, perfect. Uh, you notice that one has the name Lord Jimothy at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I seal that one up and go guy. maybe later. Okay. Oh, yeah. does it have his address on it? Uh, it doesn't. It says, uh, "It says, please, please meet here Friday evening if you wish to uh, have any interviews for these openings." They really are not in a rush to solve these crimes. Yeah, okay. Combray was just muttering to himself. He's like, "They deserve what's coming to them." <laughs> uh, Zed's just thinking to himself, like, "I'm not sure you're gonna have enough money to pay a servant now, you asshole." You bastard. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, if you're, Both if you're done with the message board, in very different ways. Uh, continuing okay. on through the city, you can see that the uh, city kind of op- opens up a little bit more to large warehouse buildings, uh, to big canvassed areas where there are a number of different um, huts and trade spots kind of in open areas. I think kind of like a fish market or a farmer's market. Uh, where lots of different people are trading specific things. And you can see, uh, just kind of in the distance, that all the boats are loading off uh, boxes and crates and different things. And uh, there are a few tables uh, kind of right near the ships that have the words requisition desk uh, above them. And that rings the bell that uh, the requisition letter that you guys have needed to be stamped and marked by a requisition officer. So that is kind of what you see. Uh, Along the way, there are some street food places. There are very excellent smells of fish, uh, cooked nuts, uh, different uh, different kind of street foods. It's a very interesting place. Um, You've also noticed a few buskers along the way. Like this is a city. This is like things are happening. There's a lot more energy in this place than Botan or Beaumont. All right. Uh, should we get that thing stamped? I guess. Who has quartermaster? That? You have our form. Yeah. Do Do we want to get that stamped right away, or should we look around first? Maybe one last attempt at the uh, chain, or do we just go yeah. cut our I losses? Mean, I say we got to break that link. Somebody. I think he's gone. All right. Yeah. You're showing up so empty-handed. Did empty-handed. you find this card at that stable? Nope, and they said they were the only place where they would have a cart, so I, I think, again, it seemed synced. We got some tidbits, but nothing fresh. DM, can I roll an investigation check on uh, this area to see if there's any place where, like, people who have shipments would be, like, holding their shipments, like carriages, stuff like that, maybe pre- or post-delivery? Uh, sure. an eight uh with an eight you gather that if anybody does consistent shipping around here they would probably have access to one of the large warehouses that are around you but other than that that's really more of a speculative guess all right um yeah i guess uh i mean i don't see i don't see the carriage anywhere so i guess guess it's about time we just Stick your tail between our legs and try and get what cash we can. Um, do we want to change what's on the thing one more time? Maybe, uh, maybe if it only says what we have, we might be able to get the full price of it instead of, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like if this guy's any good at his job, he'd roughly know the value of what we have. 
and we'd just be haggling over the price of our current goods anyways. I'm not sure how much good it... This and just, 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 just for reference, just to remind you and people listening, um, it didn't actually say on the requisition sheet, hey, this is how much you're going to make for this. The requisition sheet was just to show that I have done my delivery uh, so that everybody has the right paperwork. It's up to the requisition officer to say, hey, this is what you've brought. This is what it's worth. And because the uh, the Erasmus estate has a good relationship with this Vetus guy, he knew, okay, talk to Vetus. This is how much you'll get for it. So it's really more, It's the requisition sheet doesn't say, hey, you're going to make 10,000 gold for this small box of things. It's, yeah, yeah. hey, this is our, this is, a lawful trade this gives us the right to sell it here but it's it's up to the requisition officer we still got to make the deal yeah uh, yes correct all okay. right but it might go smoother if it just said what we have instead of them being like well we're these other bugs. well I, yeah i think though so we can just say we just this is what we shipped we don't have it we don't have that much stuff but if you Can want we, we can try and forge a it. new sheet sheet insurance we, we could we could I mean, yeah, we could just say anyone stole it. But then we could also double down on trying to find the chain. <laughs> Jeez, if we he could make him a wanted boat. man. Yeah, I don't know if we really want to be responsible for that. This is a pretty powerful guy we're getting a sense of, but... Didn't you say there was... Zed's going to start walking Someone who's carting... Wait, 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 wait. Zed, 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 Zed. Didn't you say he stole someone's cart? Yes, we stole his cart. No, no, no. Did you get that guy's name? Uh, Doesn't have to be us who puts the thing on him. That's true. Yeah, I didn't get his name, so. I don't think Ugh. so. Let me just check my right. brain sheets. Uh, you definitely didn't get his name. Oh, yeah. So you can't even look him up. His name was Kenny Powers. That's fine. It's just a pipe it dream says anyways. here. Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I forgot it's no to for ask me, his dog. name. Um, uh, yeah, no. To be honest, uh, that guy was way too shit faced to to give me any kind of clear sense of of who he was. Um, but uh, listen, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I can get us for for what we got. Um, can we just grab the uh, grab the stuff? Uh, maybe. One of you guys can help me carry this stuff over. I sure. open up the bag and start doling out stuff that's in there. Yeah, we just mm -hmm. have. Just to clarify, we have what? I'll pick three up boxes two, uh, total. Got yeah, two silk boxes and one with onyx the petals. Onyx okay, petals. I'll I'll grab those onyx petals. You've got the two silk boxes. I'll carry the other two. Okay. Yeah. And we are going to approach the requisition desk. Sure, so there's a few desks. Um, can somebody give me a perception check? 24. 24, jeez. Uh, so behind the third table in, you actually see a number of different boxes that look an awful lot familiar to those <laughs> that you had placed in the chain's <sighs> carriage. Shit. An awful this, lot. Yeah. This fucking And do I see him present? You do not. Fuck. Alright. Um He dropped it and dipped. Chode, I think those Time are our, our boxes. Um I think they us. Hold up. Yeah, we're mind linked, right? Okay. I've been since the bar, yeah. Okay. What if No. What if he dropped them off for us? Is he a good guy? Or did he cash in? We have to find this out. I don't because that could be... know if he can cash in without the letter. So maybe he dropped them off for us. Just grab them. As Just an apology him. for running the ways. Just go grab him. We could... So you said... Notices. Just go get him. You said, sorry, they're good. behind the requisition desk? Like, does it look like they've already yes. been received? Uh, they are the only boxes in that area. 
uh, the received boxes after, like, as you're watching other people go through the process, yeah. when the requisition officer, officer stamps off and signs off on their paperwork, they take a big bag of gold, and then the boxes are actually moved into the back warehouses. Oh. So this kind of seems like it's in the middle of the process, but there's no one actually doing anything. With it. All right. Let's, uh... Maybe he did us a favor. Well, Jinxie, maybe... not mine link, is just going to be like, those are the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, look, guys, there's the boxes. Very stood observation football. <laughs> oh, wait a second, wait a second. Hold on, that was awesome. <laughs> Jinxie, you're getting inspiration for that. That was fucking hilarious. <laughs> nice. As you guys are all just like standing there staring at them, not saying anything, Jinxie's like, what What the, f- what's going on? They're right there. It's so clear. <laughs> uh, Come on, you guys. guys. Jinxie, you've <laughs> done it. You're better than this. This is why you're first mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we uh, do we bring the chain over with us then? I don't think he's here. Sorry, by, are just here. Yeah, by that I meant uh, you've you've made yourself look like the chain before. That was kind of the. Nah, I don't want that stink on me. <laughs> All right, Chode, let's do this. All right. Um, so we're gonna. I'm gonna walk over to that particular desk. Cool. Uh, so you can see as you approach that particular requisition desk that there is a tiefling man who is balding and sporting an unkempt goatee uh, sitting at the desk pouring over paperwork as he's smoking tobacco from a pipe. As you get closer to him, he is finishing emptying the char from his pipe as he pulls out some fresh snuff. He looks at you and says, Requisition desk, how can I help you? Uh, we're looking for Vetus. Oh, uh, yeah, that is, uh, not me. Uh, my name's Lattimore. Um, I know Vetus, um, but he's not on shift today. Ah, you, uh, do you know if he works tomorrow? Ah, uh, you know, the funniest thing, um, uh, he was supposed to have worked today, um, but I haven't actually... It's, it's a funny story. It's been kind of weird lately, actually, with Vetus. Didn't show up to work for, like, weeks. Uh, showed up yesterday or the day before. Looking haggard as all hell. Gaunt, skinny, bags under his eyes. Looked like he hadn't slept in weeks. And uh, said he was looking for some special delivery that was supposed to be coming in. Uh, he waited around for hours. Never came. And uh, he stormed off. You said some very colorful, colorful things to me uh, when I asked, like, hey, Vetus, you coming back to work anytime soon, you slippery bastard? And, uh, yeah, no, he didn't want anything to do with me. And it's so funny because, like, as ill-tempered as he was, <sighs> he's so nice, usually. Like, he's n- normally much warmer than that. Um, weirdest thing. How do you guys know Vetus? Oh, uh, well. Like, do you guys know what's up with him, or...? No, um, you know we uh, we work uh, work for someone who has a, a great personal relationship with uh, Vetus. And, you know, we told oh. us on our way into town to uh, to you know uh, speak with with Vetus. But uh, you, you wouldn't know where we could find him, would you? Hell, I f- if I did, I'd you'd give him a sock and two because I've had to work double shifts covering for this asshole. Um, yeah, no, but how's this? If you find him, tell him Lattimore sends his fucking regards and flick him in the forehead. Uh, hey, done. I I know someone that will, and I and I point at Chode. <laughs> I will gladly flick him in the nose for you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, nose, forehead, whatever works. Well, uh, it looks is like it that way your nose is. I don't have a nose. Oh yeah, uh, it's all in. You know what? If you flick him in the facial area, that's good enough for me. Just make right. sure he feels it. Um, time. Do you guys have a requisition for me? Yeah, it, um, it looks like someone's already uh, dropped off part of our shipment here, and I'll gesture towards the boxes. Oh, I see. And he grabs uh, a note from on top of the boxes, and he goes, Zed and the Red Hand Gang. Um, is that you guys? Uh, that's that's us. Not really a gang, it's but a uh, yeah, it's a little inside joke. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, Says here, uh, sorry for leaving you guys behind. Hope you understand. I don't know. Maybe you guys want this. Yeah, I'd love that. I'll take it off. Okay, cool. 
Uh, and uh, he says, I mean, yeah, was, I'm assuming you guys have some proof that you're Zed in the Red Hand Gang. I mean, yeah, Zed. This is this is the crew. Show sure, the record. Cool, let me just form. hold your hands up. Just let me see. <laughs> I press the digitation. Red. They're all red hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hot, hot damn! I steal something off the desk. Very obviously, you're going to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's catch. see. Let's see. If he finds out. He's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" I'm like, "Ah, ah, ah!" ah. <laughs> I was pointing at my head, pointing at, right, point at my head, pointing at him, right. put it back down. Uh, yeah, I caught Still you. Still right I put it in my pocket. <laughs> uh, he goes, "Yeah, I mean, there's that's nineteen. No shadow of a doubt, you guys are uh, Zed and the Red Hand Gang. Uh, yeah, Red so I mean, band. half your stuff is here, I assume, based on what he had told me this morning, and do you guys have some other boxes or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I'll Ooh, this set the Onyx pedals on um, on the desk. Uh, you got to be careful with these Onyx pedals. Hmm. He goes, Onyx pedals. All right, that's interesting. And he opens it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You better Ooh. make him roll. And he, like, starts, like, Phew. like shaking his head. He's, like, he slams the, the box down. He's, like, what the hell? I, I told you. Is that stuff? He's, like, rubbing his eyes. Like, it looks like he's squinting. <laughs> he's, like, oh, man, that is some... Whew, that's... Wow. And he goes, so, you, what the hell? What did you... That's on your requisition? Yeah. And, and I'll uh, pull out the requisition form. As I assume Chode hands over the other boxes. Yeah, and then he goes requisition. He looks at the top number of like the requisition, kind of like he's, yeah. he's matching your letter to what you should have. So he's yeah, so he's going into the back and he's kind of flipping through some different letters and stuff. And he's like, oh, pulls out a, a piece of paper. He goes, you guys are oh a couple days late. Yeah. Hey, hold on. You guys, you guys were who Vetus was waiting for. Oh, really? Yes. Technically, the stuff is what Vetus was waiting for, regardless of who that's brought fair. it. Yeah, that's fair. And We're just like, hired employees. So he's going through the requisition list. He's like, okay, uh, you have here raw material goods for potions, etc. Yep. Yes, yes, sir. Yep. Okay, I'm seeing uh, perfumes, colognes, bottles, fragrances. Uh, it says here 40 bottles. Uh, we've yep. got uh, a little less than that. We ran into some issues on. Oh. Uh, on yeah, our yeah, that's okay. This is just this is just what you should have. Um, okay, what else here? Scarves, jasmine, Bell Chateau, twenty-five. Yeah, I think we've got twenty-four. Okay, uh, some neat. asshole stole one. Um, just one. And as he's as he's as he's reading through the list, he's like. Onyx petals, onyx petals. Guys, I'm not seeing anything for onyx petals here. I have no idea. I don't see that here. All uh, right. In that case, I guess we'll just retain possession and uh, return them back to the source. Yeah, I don't know what. Ha Sorry, guys. Normally our paperwork is top notch. I've never seen that. You're not pulling my leg by trying to throw something else in there. Right? No. He just grabs your letter. And reads that there is onyx petals on that letter. He's like, "What the heck? Oh, that's somebody's having a bad day at the paperwork office. Am I right? Somebody missed their coffee. <laughs> oh boy. Um, okay. Well, it says here, and if you can, if you don't mind, just emptying your thing so I can just do the cursory check over, please. So he's kind of asking you to empty, like, prov not empty, but like provide him all of your boxes and wares and stuff that you are delivering. Yeah, we 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 deliver our wares. Okay, perfect. So he spends the next kind of 15, 20 minutes just opening through and making sure that there's no uh, illicit goods, no, you know, dangerous weapons or things being smuggled in, things like that. Everything looks tip top. And he goes, okay, yeah, so you're a couple things short on the raw materials, your one scarf down, and uh, there's definitely a few colognes and perfumes missing, but... Um, Based on my calculation here, and he's holding like an abacus, he's like, uh, 1800 gold. Oh, oh. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, we're, we're looking for a lot more than that. Yeah, well, uh, okay, uh, and he goes, 
just playing around with the abacus. He goes, oh, sorry, guys. Yep, I miscalculated on the scarves. Uh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, 2,000. 2,000 is the final offer. Yeah. I'll be honest. We were we were looking for more like... Do you want to have like a little side huddle real quick as a as a gang? Sure, sure. Sorry, just one one sec, Lattimore. Oh, we're yes. Just back away. Yeah, no, it's fine. Sure. All right. Uh, I have an idea. I don't think he knows what onyx petals are. We tell him he's been poisoned, and that will sell him the antidote. Um. Okay, that seems slightly, slightly drastic. I feel like we could sell him this shipment. Um, the onyx petals are clearly where most of the value is, and then we try and find this fetus guy and sell him the onyx petals. I don't think we want to do that. Or is Vetus our guy? Do we just wait till Vetus is back and give him everything? Chode's gonna park up from the group for a sec. And he's gonna turn over and say, Hey, uh, uh let, 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 laddie. Lad, lad him all. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Was, uh, Vetus wearing anything weird when, uh, uh when he came by? Anything weird? Uh, Do you have like an armband on or something? An armband? Uh, no, I don't think so. He what? It is funny that you say that though. Normally, the guys in like f- fishing scrubs, you know, old dock gear that we all wear down here. Yeah. He wasn't like a really clean robe, but like I don't. No armband, that's for sure. It was like a, I don't know, like gray robe or something he looked like he'd been like out in the woods for not a no not the woods it just looked like he hadn't seen like sunlight or like happiness for a month like it's just like he looked like he was you know do you guys know what vitamin d is it's this like really cool like new scientific discovery that they're doing up in the mountains apparently sunlight is good for you and it just looks like this guy i don't know it's something off about him makes me look shinier so I can buy into that. Guys, what if these honest petals were for him? I mean, the honest petals are used for potions and antidotes and stuff like that. I mean, maybe he just desperately needed these for his own well-being. Could, but if he had a good relationship with John, I feel like he would have been pretty clear about that. Yeah. Or someone's exploiting that relationship with John. That's what I'm thinking. No one takes advantage of John except us. <laughs> sure. These things clearly are not supposed to be here, or they'd be on both forms. These were something that were t- these were supposed to not be missed. I feel like this was a the onyx petals were maybe a handshake deal with Vetus. So I think we could just maybe try and sell them separately. We were also promised like 9,000 gold for the full thing. So if we're missing like three boxes, there's no way it's only 2,000 gold. Well, that's what I'm saying is maybe that's like four for everything and five for the onyx petals. Um, So I'm saying maybe we hold on to these, get what we can. I think I could try and persuade this guy to give us some more money than than he's already offered. Oh, we, we could sell the petals to our new magic friend. <gasps> we could sell them to him. He seems mm. lovely. Yeah. I don't know if he has lots of money, though. He said he runs like a Salvation Army type of store. Well. It's like a pawn shop. Are we, are we all in agreement? We just sell what we have and hold on to the Onyx petals for now? Agreed. Let's try and get 3,000, though. I was, I I was going to ask for a little more than that and, and hopefully maybe meet somewhere in the middle. Sure. Okay. Conrio puts his hand in the middle, goes, red hands on three. One, two, three, no. red hands. And no one else, I believe, put their hand in, unless Jinxie did. No. Jinxie put his yeah, trunk in. Yes. <laughs> uh, Just wave him away. Zed's going to turn around First to uh, our friend here and say... Uh, yeah, Lattimore is mid, mid-toke mid on a big tobacco pull. I'll, just, I'll let him pull that. He's down for the day. He is, yeah. Um, listen, I'll, I'll be honest, Lattimore. We... We were looking for more like five grand. I guess we're short, so maybe Ooh. maybe four thousand would would be what we'd be Ooh. looking for. Yikes! Okay, I mean, listen. 
I'm happy to go through it with you guys if you want. Um, I'm going to be straight up with you. I'm going to be straight up with you. Firstly, the scarves, nice as they are. I personally love Jasmine stuff. Big black market for fakes in Kaplan. Big black market for fakes. And you know what? It's not that I'm saying that these are fake. I just know that what I'm personally going to be able to flip for these, a lot less. Maybe, hey, if it says your Vetus was your guy, maybe you had some sort of deal where he pays more for the scarves than I would, but I just don't see it. Moving on to the raw materials. Half this shit is still damp. Like, for, did you guys get it wet or something? Like, it's just not in the best quality, which is fine. Some people are into that. Um, moving on. Listen, listen, my best offer, my best I can do is, and please roll a charisma or persuasion check to see how much this is affected. 14. 14 is 2,400 gold. That's my absolute best I can do. And that's honestly, I'm taking a hit on that. Seriously, I'm taking a hit. All right. I'm going to inside check. Uh, sure, How yeah, we'll just say that. How many hits? <laughs> no, six. I got no idea. Yeah, it, honestly, the invisible hand of the market, who's to say whether he's lying or telling the truth? All right, Lattimore, let me uh, let me just have one more quick chat with my team here, because we're, like, we're going to be raked over the coals if we bring back only 2,400, even for the hey. condition that the shipment's in. I hope I you get understand. It. I get it. No, hey, I get it. This is the, you know, what's... Um, I get it. Yeah. Turn back. All right, guys. What do you think? Do we we take the 24? Could take one, one one more stab at three. This this guy's a good salesman. Is, uh, is there anyone else? Sorry. Uh, is there anyone else? Like, is there another, like, desk we could go to? Uh, yeah, so there's the th there's three desks. One has a back in 10 minutes lunch sign on their desk, and the other mm -hmm. one's dealing with some customers. So this is the only one right this second that's in front of you. I mean, we can always try and wait for Vetus, but I don't know when he'll be back. Are you guys not as bothered by the whole gaunt appearance robe thing uh, I am with Vetus as I am? Yeah, Vetus seems scary. This does not seem like a deal on the up and up. We've been attacked twice now by gaunt people wearing robes. I agree. I don't want to give him shit. I don't, yeah. I think we dump his stuff here as much as we can. We hold on to the onyx petals for now, but we're finding Vetus. But to find out what's going on, first things first, not just selling him stuff. Sure. All right. Well, let's uh, collect some money then. That's going to turn back around a lot more. All right. Can you do can you do three thousand at least? Meet us somewhere in the middle. And Jinxie would like one scarf. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's do it this way. Uh, I will say yes. You can try this persuasion one last time, but because this is your second roll, we're either going to do it one of two ways. You're going to roll at disadvantage, or the DC is going to be higher and you can roll normally. Choose your poison. Chode, what do you want me to do? You're making eye contact. And if we can get 3,000, we can get 3,000. I'm more meant, like, which it. way do you want me to take this? But, yeah, thank you for your help. Oh. Um, what? It, I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna <laughs> roll with can a I higher DC. The inspo? Oh, can I take okay, his inspo? Ahead. No. You may not. Well, inspo, sorry, what do you mean well, inspo? J Jinxie just oh, offered the one that I gave you, Josh. Yeah. Okay, if you're... No, that's a precedent. I don't know if I want to set. No, it has okay, to. Fair. It has to be can, done by Josh. No, cannot. Hold on. I will inspire you. A bit. Bardically. Yeah. Okay. I will. There we go. I will turn a dial. No precedent, and walking on sunshine will come. Back oh, home. that always gets me. Like I'm gonna kind of like yeah. visibly loosen my shoulders a bit uh, because I'm feeling very charismatic right now. That's a D8, right? Has it changed? D6. Oh, D6. No, not I didn't know with your still only a level one bird level. Yeah. All right. So I've gone for the higher DC one, one giver. Yes, you have. There's a lot on this. I can need this. I, I, what are we starting with here? What was the first, first roll? Well, I rolled a two. I get a plus ten. 
So I rolled a 12. Okay, so Last 12. time I rolled like whatever. Four. I'm going to tell you here really quick, just for just for setting here. The DC's an 18. Yeah, I so figured it's somewhere around there. Oh boy. Come on, six. Ah, uh, nice uh, it doesn't. No, I'm uh, yes. <laughs> it's, it's a so he goes, listen. I'll turn the music off. Okay, here, here's what I'll say. I'm, I'm a businessman. I understand, you know, you guys have boxes that you have to report to and stuff. So, I, uh, on one condition, that you promise to sock Vetus in the face as hard as you can when you see him and say that it was for me, I'm willing to go up to 2,500 and your elephant friend can keep a scarf. Yes. Done. I will punch him through the wall for you. Perfect. Thank you so, so much so much and uh, there's no chance that your magical technology being a robot can like get me that footage or anything like is that is that a is that a thing Uh, audio recording i can maybe record the audio of it but okay uh, well i i would like that a lot all right i'll i'll do what i can i'll tinker around with some stings thank you so much and uh yeah so he he was, was there anything else before he starts doing some paperwork here? No, I was just going to say in the in the mind chat to I'll Chode, take the gold, so. um, look, you're, you're, you're charging roller coaster pricing for that footage, all right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> it's going to take so a lot, lot more... to be, for me to figure this out, so it's going to cost some money. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of more starts filling out the paperwork and filling in some of the blank spaces with the numbers and things that you agreed on. And everything is written in detail, so he says very much. The 2,500 gold is given to you, and as he writes that down and everything, he's completing the paperwork, he gives a bag uh, to you guys. He specifically says uh, that the uh, hairy elephant received one of Jasmine's uh, scarves. What color did you take, Jinxie? Um, are there any, like, maroon ones? Yeah, I'll say there's one maroon okay. one. Yeah. Okay, so he, he marks that there's a maroon scarf taken. Uh, he also says the stipulation that a part of the stipulation is the Vetus punching clause. Uh, and he actually makes you Chode sign off on that, on his sheet of paper. I'll uncap my finger and sign. Okay, perfect. And uh, after that, after about five or ten minutes of paperwork and stamps and seals and different requisition letters being torn up and other ones signed, he hands you uh, your final requisition notice that essentially is your receipt that everything here was done above board and that nobody should be in remittance uh, after this point. So kind of we are square and he holds his hand out uh, as if to shake it to finalize the deal. I, I will shake his hand. Okay, perfect. Um, and he says, okay, well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. If you or your uh, boss, John Erasmus, have any other business for me, uh, let me know. I'm happy to work with you guys in the future. This has been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. I'll take the gold because I think I have all yeah, of John's gold. Yeah, so sure. You're a treasurer. Open up it. Just, uh, just before we get out of here, do you know of any like? This might be a crazy question, but is there anywhere underground around here? The other sewers you can get into, or there is there a mine nearby? Just I'm trying to think. If Fetus hasn't seen the sun, or you think he's just been inside? Good question. Uh, I don't particularly know. Most of my day is spent here in the trades port. But ever since I was a kid, I've wondered what the hell happens with that water from the walls. You know, you've seen the waterfall fortifications. It's like the water comes from nowhere. It seems to go nowhere. And I've always thought it's got to go somewhere. That moat has never overflowed in all the years that I've lived here. So my guess is there is something under the city, but... I've never seen it. Thanks. Just gonna turn right. to the squad. Be like, we uh, we want to take a little bit to get our heads together and think of our next move. We want to try to go somewhere. I'm actually gonna poke back to Lattimore one time. Hey, uh, no chance our friend that dropped off the uh, shipment earlier said where he was going or, or, or gave you any sense of where he was headed. We're supposed to meet up with him, but uh, he never told us where. Uh, no. Um, I come to think of it, I don't think he mentioned anything. He just had uh, him and a few people dropped off the boxes, and 
left. You know, Did you say like, a few people? Friends. Uh, friends. Yeah, I think there was two other people with them. Can you describe them? Uh, not really. I mean, just people hauling boxes. Uh, I no, not really. Rope, not not Vetus robes though, right? No, uh, no, not Vetus robes. Thank you, kinda. Yeah, no problem. Well, I think we should check out uh, that magic shop tomorrow, but that's that's really all I got yeah, to do in, in this town. Maybe we should just uh, call it a night and start early tomorrow. Sure. I guess so, we got to find a room. So it's about six o'clock. The sun is setting. Uh, and you guys realize that, yes, you probably should find some lodging for the evening. Um, we will go back to, I guess, that first area we came into where I believe the inns and bars were all located. I don't think we want mm-hmm. to try it. The entertainment district. Yes. And, uh, I think uh, we can pretty much just say we'll take the first average looking cheapest inn. Sure. So I will say that uh, kind of kitty corner to the Dirty Dog bar that had the big bar fights and everything, uh, you find a place called the River Eel Inn, um, which has a uh, little eel with a fez on the top as the logo. Um, And uh, yeah, you walk in and there is a uh, very interesting uh, looking person kind of working the concierge desk. It looks to be a water genasi. And they welcome you in and say, Welcome to the Riffle Eel Inn. Is there anything I can help you with? We would like uh, some rooms. Lovely. How many rooms do you need? How many beds, I I should say? Do you have any honeymoon suites? Honeymoon? No, I don't believe we have honeymoon. We have Uh. singles, doubles, or we have uh, hostel style, which is about 40 cots in a room. Uh, we'll take two, uh, double rooms. Two doubles. Okay, that will be one gold, one silver. In the mine link, I'm going to say, now with Jinxie. That will flourish, man. I'll sleep. Yeah. All he wants to do is love you, and you just throw it. I love Jinxie, but you guys, you you push him on me. It's it's too much. Cho, do you even sleep in a bed? I don't. But so, I need the room, so I prefer fine. not to be in a single room. That's fine. It might be a little snug for me. That's fine. Uh, so I got it. One gold, one silver. I can pay for that. Lovely. Here bank. are your keys. And he hands you two sets of keys. Enjoy your stay. Uh, are you the one to talk to if we also want to know Yeah, if we're new in town and just need some, some help finding our way? I suppose I can give you some insight, yes. I'm just, uh, I'm just looking for a, like a potion shop, possibly. Something to visit tomorrow to help kind of restock our supplies. Potion shop? Uh, well, perhaps the Arcane Guild could help you. Uh, however, I know that they've been experiencing some interesting hours lately. Um, what do you mean by that? Um, pardon me? What do you mean by their interesting hours? Oh, just some of the concierges. Uh, we have a, a dinner that we attend on Tuesdays, and I was just told by some of the Arcane Guild individuals that they've been uh, they've been experiencing some interesting uh, phenomena. And I don't know how to describe what I've heard, but um, and you can see that he's very uh, weary to talk about what he's heard. Um, perhaps rolling a uh, persuasion or a uh, charisma check to open him up about this. Okay, I mean, if I got the... What's persuasion? Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to ask him, just like, uh, you just can't remember anything about that night? That's uh, 16 plus 8, 24. Ooh. Well, between you and I, uh, one of the concierges said that uh, there's some very interesting people in town lately, and uh, they're worried about eyes. Uh, so I know that they had been planning on closing the Arcane Guild for just a few days, 
uh, until things settle down, uh, which is good for us because a lot of the inns that the wizards and sorcerers go to uh, are closed, which means more business for us here at the River Eel. <laughs> Did they say, first off, I am happy for the business. It looks like you're thriving. Uh, we are, and like you look around and it's like sewage is dripping from the ceiling and like the lights are out and stuff and it's did they say anything about these eyes they're worried about or whose eyes no no it, honestly it was kind of a, a good thing uh, the concierges were given a few days off and they get a mini vacation in the middle of the week I, I, I could only wish that I had that kind of uh, the freedom over my life well thank you very much and we you're very welcome we'll head to our room uh, this way that way uh, where am I going here uh, truthfully, uh, give me back that key. Oh, I'm sorry, this was... <laughs> I gave you the janitor's closet key. Here you go. And he, uh, he gives you the other key. Both should be upstairs. Uh, follow, follow the signs and you'll, you'll see you're in room 106 and you're in room 10... Uh, let me see. No, you're in room 106. You're in room... Uh, hmm. Let's see, uh... Hmm... You're, you're, I believe you're in adjoining rooms, 106 and 107, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you. <sighs> Jesus. Uh, stay, thanks, man. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's going to head up to the room. Okay, perfect. Is is there, a fi- like, a main lobby? Uh, Yeah, it's kind of it's, it's kind of small, though. It's, it's really just, like, a, a single room with the concierge desk in there and a few chairs just to kind of sit in the lobby, and then it's upstairs. This is more of like a vertical uh, building than anything. There's like three or four different stories, but you guys are just on the first the first floor. All right. Okay, Jigsy, right. Yeah, Jigsy's going to go up to his room. Who's okay. bunking with me? Uh, Am I sure. taking football? Oh, yeah, it doesn't... Whatever. I'm happy. All right. I'm happy either way. I'll take football. Okay. Tom, Rio, and I. Um... Zed does not have anything interesting he wants to do tonight, so I'm happy to just... I assume kind of most of the actual businesses are closed at this point, other than, like, taverns and bars and stuff? More or less, you would get the okay. assumption, yeah. It's, you know, it's nighttime. There's no electric lights. It's dark. Well, you know what? I shouldn't say that. You can look around. Um, you don't know that every business in Capitol is closed. Conrad looks out the window and just goes like, they fucking, everyone just keeps telling me about this Arcane Guild, which I know is not open today. So it's just like, why? Why would I even want to go out there now? Um, so I'm just going to turn, I'm going to turn back to the group and I'm like, does anyone want to play like a game tonight? Or just stay in, have a little, little Red Hand Gang night? Sure. Um, question. Mm-hmm. We talked about uh, what Mr. Zed learned at this place you went. What did you learn at this place you went, Mr. Mr. Goldilocks? Uh, Well, first things, now that I remember that, we definitely shouldn't go out tonight. Just just might want to stay here, tucked away nice and safe. Second, more of the same uh, in terms of what else we've heard today, it's like I take out the uh, job poster that I pulled off the other, like, these, it's the servants and the slaves who are disappearing mostly, it seems, but I don't know if whatever force is controlling that is just taking kind of the lower rungs of society so people don't miss them and manipulating them or if they're being recruited into something, but it's, people are disappearing and they, they this is still happening. Jeez. So someone's kidnapping all these lower end people. Uh, it's fricked up. And it's at night when they're out running around. Do we do we think that this has something to do with Emily's? Or do we think this is a separate issue? Hard to say. It would explain where all these people come from. Why they all look like they're just so beat up. It's almost they could just be being you know, held till they're being put to their purpose or yeah, I, I think it's something. You asked me what I learned in the bar. That's all I learned in the bar. Nothing else. I'm going to roll insight on that. 
Yeah, roll deception, Scott, just to see what the no, DC is. I don't really decide. want to. It's just that's <laughs> off, but it's a plus 11, so I will. Yeah, you win. Doesn't matter. It's a 21. Okay. Yeah, you believe him, Zed. Okay. Well, it's nice that you can finally get a little honesty out of this guy. I'm just like thinking internally. All right, what game are we playing? I'm, I'm going to probably call it, guys. I'm, I'm pretty pooped. Oh. Uh, Jinxie, you win. Chess. Jinxie might just watch. Jinxie has to go number two, so I might just head outside. I was going to suggest there's a bathroom, but then Camryo stops and like looks at Jinxie and goes, y- you should do that. You should go outside. Make it quick. Apparently we shouldn't be out at nights, according to somebody's. I think there might be a difference between an emaciated slave and a seven-foot-tall loxodon. Which one's worse? In terms of ease of grabbing. Just make it quick. I don't want okay, to go find I'll you. I'll be right back. Also, I just really wouldn't go outside tonight if I was part of a certain bourgeoisie class. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you do while you were there? <laughs> that thing's right! All right. uh, yeah, okay, so Jinxie, the River Eel Inn is pretty shitty. Um, there isn't interior plumbing. Uh, there is an outhouse behind the inn. So that's where you'd be heading. Jinxie's going to go down to our concierge friend again. Mm-hmm. Um, and just said, do you, do you have a minute? I Yes, I do. Okay, because I've got about three. Uh, before I have to run, <laughs> but okay. Um, do do you know who runs this this city? Who runs the city? Yeah, like who's who's in charge? Um, I I assume you mean, of course, Rosemary Tulip Toe, uh, the governor. Yeah. yeah, that that lady. She do you, do you know where she stays sometimes? Well, the, the palace keep, of course. Okay, okay. And and where would I find that? <laughs> you just keep going north until you essentially hit the mountains, and it's the large palace at the. Mm. It's really hard to miss. Okay, okay. okay. Yes. Oh, and and one more thing. Okay. Do. You... <laughs> Would you, would you say it's safe to go out tonight or stay in with, with all this weird stuff going on? And he looks you up and down. Um, I think you'll probably be fine. I I don't really believe all the hooey <laughs> that you hear. Plus, if anybody was going to attack anybody, it certainly wouldn't be you. Ooh, okay. Okay. Jinxie's just going to say, like, thank you, and then, uh, Kind of give him a little swoosh with his new scarf as he walks by. Okay. Are you going to go back to the outhouse, Tiza? Yeah, I'm going to go to the outhouse. Okay, perfect. Uh, so we're going to pick up really quickly uh, from the upstairs crew. Anything you guys are doing before bed? Like, Zed, is there anything that you're doing? Zed, I think no. it's just in bed. Okay. Uh, and Cambrio and Chode? Uh, I brought my dragon play? chest set out. If you want to, if you know the rules, if you want to play, I could teach you the rules. I do know how to play. Perfect. Uh, we can start. And I used to play all the times. Huh. Well, that's if you guys want, we could um, do one of two things. One, because this is the end of the episode. In between episodes, we could play a game of chess between Speedy and Scott and say who won. Or we can do like an intelligence check. We'll figure that out in between and we'll get back to you guys. Uh, but we're going to end tonight's episode with Jinxie in the outhouse. Jinxie, you are... Uh, in this wooden room, uh, stinking of different smells and, and things in a dark hole beneath you, when um, you hear a knock on the door. H- Hello? And that's where we're going to end tonight's episode. Oh, oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Jinx, I knew you should have stayed inside, it. damn it! Well, you gotta poop, you just gotta poop. Just de-stressing. You know? No, just, just, you know, that's his zen area. He's just sitting now there. It's it smells like him. him You're in so. a public washroom at night <laughs> outside and someone's knocking <laughs> on the door.
Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed our podcast, please rate and review five stars for the five stars of the show. A special thanks to Matthew for designing our map and to Isabel for creating our art. You can find their work on Instagram at Matthews underscore makings and at Laco Miles, L-A-C-O-M-Y-L-E-S. Thanks as well to Drew Hewitt and Arcan Anthems for doing our theme and background music. For music you too can use, visit patreon.com slash arcane anthems to add the perfect theme to your home game. You can follow more Eldritch Buds news on Instagram at Eldritch Buds or on our subreddit at r slash Eldritch Buddy.